Have you ever been to a hospital or a doctor's appointment when something very important about your health was communicated to you by a medical professional, but then later you struggle to communicate that same information to someone else? When your spouse or children or friend asks you what the doctor said, you try to just give them the gist of the conversation, but those details become fuzzy and the longer you try to communicate them, the more frustrated you and the people trying to understand you can become. The bottom line is that you probably are not a doctor and those terms are just not as familiar to you, especially when you are also trying to balance that information with the physical and emotional discomfort and pain you are feeling and the personal long-term implications of all those things you're trying to communicate. You know what, that's how a lot of Christians feel about giving biblical counsel to their friends in community. We often feel inadequate, unqualified, and uneducated. After all, aren't there those pastors and scholars and authors out there and others with them who seem to have the entire Bible committed to memory? Who do we think we are to offer any kind of advice to someone else, especially when the implications of that advice could affect their eternal souls? These are important questions and they lead us to explore the next steps of the kind of church God imagines us to be, the kind He has designed us to truly become. You see, so many of us live day to day in an indecisive fog. We lack confidence about what to do in any number of daily situations regarding our marriages or our children or our jobs. There's just so many things to worry about, so many things we have no idea how to handle or much less how to even face. And the thing is, the people around us, the people we care about, well, they're all seeking answers for themselves as well. And so we send each other texts, make phone calls, sit down over lunch, and we ask people we trust for advice, for counsel. We may do this with more than one person. And once we've heard everyone's take on our situation, we compile all of their opinions and we make our decision. You see, that process is actually a reflection of God's best plan for our lives. But sometimes the way we do it, it's actually a dim reflection that is less effective than we wish. And honestly, less effective than God intends it to be. And sometimes the counsel we receive turns out to be less than helpful. So then we might become timid about asking anyone for advice. We choose to go it alone or maybe only ask for help from qualified people. We just don't feel secure about where to turn or worse, we become our own source of counsel in life, unable to hear from anyone else and completely confident that we know better than anyone else how to live our own lives. What if I told you that the church God imagines for you is one where all of God's people learn to be a part of biblically counseling each other? That is, it should be a normal part of our daily lives together. That sounds pretty unrealistic, right? Well, this is exactly what God imagines. He doesn't want us living our lives in the dark, always feeling confused as we half-heartedly try to pass along information that honestly feels pretty foreign to us, like news from a doctor. He has something better a community of Christ followers who learn together what it means to counsel one another biblically and who feel confident in doing so because they understand all of the wisdom and safety that God has provided, not just for the endless questions in this life, but also for the way we approach these questions together. Over the years, you might have heard some illustrations or metaphors about the Bible's role in our lives. Two of the most popular ones are that God's Word is like a roadmap or like an owner's manual for your life. Now, these metaphors have their merit, but they also have some pretty major flaws. First of all, when people hear that God's Word is like a map or a manual, they tend to assume that every single question of their lives has an easy answer on a certain page of their Bible. After all, if you open up a map, you will find your street listed on it somewhere. Or if you are looking at a component of something you own in the owner's manual, you will find that specific piece labeled and explained. But you soon discover that the Bible is not always like this. In other words, you can't open it up, look up your name, find out who you should marry, what job you should take, and whether or not you should serve as a greeter or in the children's ministry at your church. You see what I mean? Those specifics are not always there. You see, God's Word is not a complete roadmap telling you where to go. It is an expression of the complete wisdom, story, and plan that God has for the whole world, which you are a part of, which means that it won't always tell you where to go, but rather how to walk wherever you find yourself going or where you choose to go. 
In other words, it's not telling you which street to turn down, but how to drive safely on any street on which you happen to find yourself. In God's sovereignty, His plan for your life will be accomplished, but He won't generally tell you all about it before it happens. This foresight will not be 2020, even though the hindsight of eternity will most certainly be 2020. You see, Scripture is not just rote information to be memorized and applied, even though we tend to treat it that way. Scripture is more like breath. You need it more than anything, but you can't just put your finger on it. We inhale, exhale, and sometimes in certain altitudes or situations, we may even struggle to catch our breath, even though we can't see it. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this exact thing. The Amplified Version expands our understanding of the meaning of the original words by saying, all scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. So that the man, which translates all people, whether man, woman, or child of God, may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now look at all that's there, giving and receiving instruction, offering and taking correction or restoration, training for our public lives and private lives to reflect who we have become in Christ, honor and integrity and moral courage. These are the ways that we should walk no matter where we choose to walk or where we find ourselves walking accidentally. This is the breath, the very air around us that sustains us on the journey. So our role as the church is to let Christ's word shape who we are as Christ's followers, which will inform what we do, where we go, who we marry, how we react to difficulty in our marriages, how we treat our kids, how we react to stress at work, and so forth and so on. In this manner, God's Word is completely trustworthy to reveal to us God's plan of radical grace offered through the Rescuer, His Son Christ, and then also infinite wisdom for how to live out this gospel in our lives. Yes, sometimes the scriptures are extremely specific to what to do and what not to do in certain situations, but often we will need to seek counsel from one another. In other words, someone else's viewpoint of this infinite wisdom will be the exact angle we can't see from where we are currently positioned. So if we believe that God's Word is where we can seek and find principles, directives, and wisdom for living, then we must ask ourselves, how do we get this wisdom? Must we all become biblical scholars? And what if we get it wrong? What if there are questions that we just can't answer together? These are huge questions, and our default go-to practice is to take our questions only to the specialists, people who know more than us. And you know what, there's a lot of wisdom, even biblical wisdom, in seeking counsel from someone wiser than yourself. But seeking wisdom shouldn't just be a process of taking isolated advice from only one person at a time. Sometimes this will be the case, but overall, God's best plan for us is to learn not just to seek counselors, but also to become counselors for one another in community, meaning people who are growing together in knowledge and wisdom in God's Word as we each experience, apply, and share these principles of life together. It's like on-the-job training or learning in real time. That is why Proverbs 11:14 reveals that where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Yes, one person seeking biblical wisdom is good, but a whole community of people seeking biblical wisdom together is beautifully messy, yet transformative and life-giving. There are a few big elephants in the room regarding this topic, so let's really address them. First of all, there are times when professional clinical counselors will need to be sought out. We're using the word counsel here a bit differently than the modern connotation. If you need to see a medical or a clinical counselor, go do it. There's a difference between clinical counseling and spiritual counseling, and a wise spiritual counselor, which we need to be for one another, will know when to encourage you to seek wisdom in other areas beyond his or her own knowledge or experience. So this doesn't replace clinical counseling, although 
it might help us live healthier lives together to the extent that we stop isolating and allowing problems to build to the point that we only approach counselors in moments of danger or moments of extreme crisis. In other words, we will become people who are talking it out with our community every day. And if we need to talk it out with a doctor or a clinician, we will be confident that we don't have to go do so alone. We will have a trusted community of friends who will go with us through whatever we are facing. Often though, our biggest issue is not being willing to listen to counsel, but being willing to offer it appropriately as well. Again, of the spiritual persuasion, not the clinical. Proverbs 19.20 tells us to listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Since we have a hard time listening, we seem to have a hard time offering help as well. We leave it to the professionals, the pastors, or the know-it-alls. Sure, no one likes a know-it-all, but that shouldn't make us content to remain know-it-nuns. Scripture says His church, of which you are a part and I'm a part, is a kingdom of priests. This means that we are connected to God through Christ, and we are empowered by God's very Spirit, and then we're connected to one another in honest, real, helpful relationships. In fact, it is through these relationships that Jesus actually changes our lives. Hear me here as I address an eternal myth about the way people change. It doesn't just happen through information, even biblical information. Rather, God's transformation of hearts always occurs when we are living out this counsel together. So you may not be a professional, but you are a counselor. And you shouldn't just be listening to someone's problems or only offering what seems right to you in the moment. It should be normal for us to be sharing with one another the life-giving encouragement, wisdom, and even correction that is found in Scripture. Ask yourself, when was the last time a friend shared Scripture with you when you needed encouragement or direction? Or when did they offer to sit down and search the Scriptures with you for that direction? You see, we should be allowing these kinds of conversations in our relationships, even though none of us is fully qualified. That is the point of community coupled with humility. So listen to what Paul reveals in Romans 15, 14. He says, personally, I am convinced about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, amply filled with all spiritual knowledge and competent to admonish and counsel and instruct one another. Peter echoed these sentiments in 2 Peter 1, 3, when he said, for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through true and personal knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. You see, we have absolutely everything we need. You see, that's the second elephant. We don't feel like this is true, do we? We don't know what to say, that is, how to give wise counsel. Or maybe we don't even know where to turn to in the Bible to begin looking for it. See, this is a lot like the roadmap illustration. We act as if we must have that entire map memorized in order to help someone else find the way. Instead of just knowing that we have the map with us and we can be willing to keep looking at it together as we travel ahead, we've been given everything we need, not in knowing all the answers, but in knowing that we can keep leaning into God's grace and searching together so that we may find God's best wisdom, not just our own best ideas in the moment. Again, this doesn't mean we have all wisdom, but it does mean that we are free to find all wisdom that we need together. After all, the wisest people are not know-it-alls but rather people who constantly seek wisdom and humility. The people of the city of Berea were a lot like this. The book of Acts reveals that they were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth, and as a result, many Jews believed, as did many of the prominent Greek women and men as well. What a great picture of the kind of church community we should be imagining. It is one where we search the scriptures every day together. And look at the result. More people came to trust Christ as their rescuer. So how does all this work? Well, it begins by expecting these kinds of biblical conversations in our relationships and not shying away from them out of insecurity or pride. Hear me on this. If we don't know the answers, we should not just offer what sounds best to us in the moment. We should offer to spend time together seeking and finding biblical wisdom. You see, this takes humility, but these kinds of conversations, they should be normal for us as we trust that God's Spirit will lead us after all. 
It is not our advice or counsel that changes people's lives. It is God's work through His gospel, His spirit, and His people living in an honest community that does the actual transformational work within us. So we can be humble, yet confident to speak to one another from Scripture. Even if we ourselves are struggling with the very thing we know we should be communicating from God's Word, we shouldn't shy away in humble pride or insecurity. We should just communicate that, that we are struggling here, but we know that it is still the right thing to say. This kind of humility that doesn't shy away from offering or receiving biblical counsel will create strong bonds in our hearts with Christ and with one another. This means that it becomes normal for each of us to not just listen to each other or just begin offering advice, but also to always ask each other, hey, what does the Bible say about that? Or what principles does God's Word offer to walk us through something like that? Such questions help us begin at the right place instead of a place of isolation, ignorance, pride, or worse, just well-wishing guesswork. And finally, if you as a community or a group can't come to a sense of peace about a certain situation, then certainly seek counsel from others outside your group, maybe a pastor, maybe a professional. But here's the deal, go together to seek this wisdom, not alone. This way, everyone grows together in biblical wisdom and no one isolates. This is the kind of community God has imagined for you and for me, where we have a safe place to seek counsel and where we are confident to offer it because it is not our wisdom that we are trusting in but the God-breathed wisdom that goes beyond our abilities that transforms our lives, our families, our relationships, and ultimately, the entire world around us.